Yeah, I know they're two different quarterbacks. Does it help playing someone like Daniels before you play a Lamar Jackson to kind of like tune up for it? Oh, not really. I mean, I think each and every week you have a quarterback or someone on offense that presents a lot of challenges. and. Um, they, they have similar styles, but at the same time, Lamar Jackson is two-time MVP. He's um, that guy, so uh, it's a tough task to get after him. We feel like we've had success in the past, but it means nothing if we don't take it to the table on Sunday. Why do you think you've had success against him? I think it's a mixture of schematics, guys playing fast, um, simple defensive things like guys doing their job, um, trusting everybody to do their job, and tackling. Tackling is huge, being able to tackle the football, uh, second guy in, punch at the ball, things like that. PJ, you mentioned he's a two-time MVP, but is he taking his game even to another level with some of the things he's doing? Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't watch a whole lot of other games other than the games that we study, honestly, but uh, every time you watch him, uh, he's dynamic, and uh, it's what whether he's extending out of the pocket or even in the pocket, uh, the design quarterback runs, the not design runs, um, especially with uh, the big back in the backfield with him, uh, it makes it a tough challenge for defenses to stop. Getting Nick back potentially, what does that do, especially with Alex? Yeah, it'd be big. Uh, I know Herb's been out for a while. He's itching to be back. Um, be good to have him back. A uh, guy that can rush the pass but also stop the run. Obviously, uh, Preston in the rotation as well. Uh, feel good about our depth. What did Preston show you? I mean, he's what he's been doing his whole career, uh, making plays. Uh, I mean, to, it's not easy to be thrusted into a defense with five-day notice, whatever, to be able to go out and play meaningful snaps and make meaningful plays. Uh, it was a great addition for us. Have you taken it upon yourself to talk to new guys or rookies about this rivalry and what these games are like? I don't really have to. Mike T lays the floor really well in his team meetings that uh, if you don't understand it after those, um, you got something wrong with you. Do you guys any bills, like old plays or anything specific to kind of get the juices flowing? Um, not, not too much. TJ, have you guys seen a one-two punch quite like Jackson and uh, Derrick Henry? No, I mean, they're, they're number one in, the, in a lot of categories offensively for a reason. Um, they're at the top of the NFL, uh, the things that they do, the way that they stay committed to the run, the way that they run. You don't know who has the ball. Uh, a lot of their play pass uh, opens those things up in the passing game as well for them. And uh, it's, it's going to be a big challenge for us, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Is tackling tackling, is it fundamentals, or is it a point where because of his resume and his uh, unique size and speed and uh, uniform type, body type and everything, is it you tackle differently with him, or is it the same? No, it's just getting hats to the ball is the big emphasis. I mean, even in whether it's uh, 22, whether it's 43 in the screen game, or even Lamar, it's just a matter of getting as many hats to the ball as possible. Because they, I think yards after contact, they, they're either first or second in the NFL. Yards after catch, they're first or second in the NFL. It seems like every offensive category, these guys are in the top five. Uh, and the best way to combat that is to hunker down, stop the run, make them one-dimensional, and uh, get as many hats to the ball as possible. It seems like these two teams have a lot of similar types of players to um, the same kind of philosophies and schematics and things like that. I mean, it's it's been a... It's been a dogfight every year since I've been here, and I know it's been that way as well before I was here as well, and there's a lot of history. Uh, obviously, the two coaches have gone against each other for a long time. Um, there's those matchups, whether it's, uh, I mean, Ronnie Stanley's been there for, for a long time. Alex has been here for a long time. I know he's not playing this week, but it's just those types of matchups where um, you go out and draft guys to stop guys from Baltimore, and they do the same for us. So um, it creates unique battles uh, collectively and individually. What's it like playing in a game like this? Such a big rivalry, the almost hatred there between the two teams. Yeah, uh, I probably say, like you said, the automatic hatred, you know, just from fan to fan base, uh, is kind of already crazy. And then with us players, you know, just a hard fought game. So. Just trying to get the dub is really what we can focus on. Does this bring back memories of maybe like Georgia, Alabama? Would you say that's comparable? Is that the big rivalry for you? Ah, uh, yeah, that is the big rivalry. For you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't compare it to that though. That's a little more. This is serious, but I'll probably say Georgia and Alabama over the years is probably more serious. Georgia, we saw the physicality against Washington. Is it as much or more against Baltimore as far as the corners and that type of play? Uh, really just with like, you know, each corner presents itself as uh, we got physical corners. You know, they like to strike at the ball. Uh, in the run game, you know, blocking on the be used. So I'd probably say close to the end. How much did you like to hear the show for the next question? Did you ever see the game against Washington with the catch on the side, on the catch over the middle, the catch in the end? Uh, just really just to, you know, 
control the world, or I'm not just a football guy either. You know what I mean? I do that a lot and we're often, but uh, just the variety is my game. What do you think you would have to do last year without the professional question? What do you think you would have to already have a moment like that in the battle where you're in the status of the battle? Just, you know, making that already a statement. You know, uh, you got to account for certain players. I'm probably one of those players on their board that they got to account for. You know, just marking yourself in a robbery is always a good thing. How much do you kind of look to trust the idea that they're one of the best against the run and one of the worst against the pass, knowing that you maybe they're selling out to stop the run and that kind of frees up yourself? Uh, I'll probably say not really as much, to be honest, because us, we got a good running game ourselves. So, uh, and I know they're high ranked, you know, by stopping the run, but I feel like we're going to run the ball pretty good. And then passing game, you know, speak for itself. Georgia's offense has really been clicking the last four weeks. You know, how does that feel for you, like that? is kind of turn the page a little bit here. Yeah, uh, that's kind of like what I've always been used to, you know, at UGA. Uh, but with a new Q and a few new players from you know, other organizations, I feel like the camaraderie has grown a little different than the past few years. Is that the big part? You know, like everyone Yeah, together. coming together, yeah. Coming together, uh, you know, listening to one each other is a huge part of you. I know it was a few years ago, but being a Georgia guy, were you aware of some of the things Heinz Ward has done in this project? Yeah, uh, I used to watch Heinz Ward all the time. Uh, we can't do some of the stuff Hans Warriors used to do now, but uh, I used to watch them all the time. I think a lot of people talked last week about what kind of Mike Williams, another big target opposite you, yeah. could do for the offense. Given that he got targeted at the end of the game, how much do you think that maybe that could free you up in, instead of vice versa? A lot. Uh, like I said, at the end of that Washington game, I didn't even know, you know, he was sitting on the bench the whole time. And then when his number was called, you know, he made a play. So with them doing that, that's going to put them on their big board as well. So it's going to be great for me. They're going to have to cover two guys.